So I've been working on this clamp assembly and the, the customer that I'm working on this, once I kind of see it before we go into production with it, I don't really want to share my inventor model for a couple of reasons. One, I know they don't have inventor. I know they don't have a CAD system. So that's one challenge. Two, I don't really want to worry about, you know, am I emailing it? Am I going to use some other means like Dropbox or Box or something else to transfer it? And three, I don't really want them to have access to the data. I want some protection on it. I'm still willing to share the, the information so they can review it, but I want some protection on the, you know, the IP, the intellectual property. So Inventor past releases had similar functionality. What they've done in, in the 2019 product portfolio is they've standardized the shared view functionality. So first off, I am already logged in to my A360, my Autodesk account. So that's step one of the process of sharing this. And I'm gonna to go to the Collaborate tab and I'm gonna create a shared view is what I want. So the idea is that it will take this data and create a, a viewable, a visualization. So it's not the actual CAD data, it's this visualization that somebody can query and, and they can pan and zoom, they can do measurements, they can, they can get a sense, they can mark it up, they get some ability to do that. Now prior to doing that, I'm gonna create a new view rep. And in this view rep, I'm gonna call this internals. And I'm going to turn off that outer case. I'm also gonna turn off these two slides. So the idea, and this plate at the top. So the idea is that I'm only sharing these internal components. So the key thing here is that when I go to share this view, only the components that are visible will be accessible by the other person. So I'll select the shared view option. This is gonna fire up the new shared view panel. So it's just first time, it's just making sure I'm logging in. And what the shared view panel does is it shows me all my other active views. So when you create a view, it's active by 30 day, for 30 days by default. And it will automatically time out and really just disappear. So after 30 days, it's gone. You can't access it. The person you share the link with can't access it. So it's it's gone. And at any time, you can use the menu and you can extend it. So just add another 30 days to it. You can delete it. Same thing, you're removing it. So it's gone from the cloud. It's gone for, from you having access to it. The other person can access it. So you can delete it as well. We'll talk about the view and browser and the copy link in a section in a second. I just wanted to show you that you do have the ability to extend them and delete them. So I'm going to create a new shared view. I'm going to call this my, my clamp assembly. So we'll say this is the clamp assembly. We'll call this Gen 2. And you do have two options here. So one is I can hide the component names. So the person in the other end will still see that there's different parts in there. It's just they won't see the, the component names. You can also hide the part properties. So the iProperty information will transfer into the viewer. So when they pick on a part, they'd be able to see the description or maybe the subject, or the mass properties. So this information, this iProperty information will go as well. So I'm gonna leave those on for now, or leave those off for now, just so we can see what it's gonna do. And I'm gonna click share. So now what it's gonna do is it's gonna process this. And we can see that it's it's fired up this little, this little dialog box. But I'm actually free to continue working within my inventor and I can close this because it's spawned off a second process to really just push this up to the cloud. So what this utilizes, it utilizes the A360, but there's this Autodesk viewer on the front end. The Autodesk viewer is, is free. You can go to the Autodesk viewer and you can actually upload any model you want. It's a great viewer. So if you've got you know, an inventor model, you've got a, a SOLIDWORKS model or a solid edge model, and you just want to take a look at it, you can load it up into the into the free Autodesk viewer and spin it and pan it and take a look at it. Now the person on the other end will require an A360 account or an Autodesk account, but that's free. Now you can see now that this has, has completed. So I can see that it's completed here. Also notice that it's now visible within the panel. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy the link. And what that does, it puts that into your clipboard. You can then email it to the other person. You can send it through a text message, whatever you need to do. The person on the other end, that's all they need. They click on that link, it takes them to the viewer, and they're able to, to start viewing this model. So let's take a look at it. So I can click View and Browser here, 
I can also go into the shared view panel and I can select view in browser. So it's launching my default browser, which in this case is Chrome. And what it's doing is it's taking me to the Autodesk viewer. So like I said, this is this is a free viewer. You can see I'm at you know, viewer.autodesk.com. Really what's happened here is inventors taking care of pushing that visualization up. So if I had gone to the website directly, I would have had to share my, my CAD model, whereas this is just pushing up that visualization. So notice that I still have the ability to pan, I can zoom, I can, I can zoom in on these particular components. And if I select that component and I right click, I can do things like isolate. So I only want to see these components or this, the selected components. Let's hide these components, right? Let's focus on that component. Let's zoom right into it. So I have the ability to turn things off and on. If I take a look at the model browser, remember that I, I didn't hide the part names. So it's showing me the various parts now, and I can do the same right-click option. The difference is, is that it automatically zooms to that particular component as I select on it. Now, if I right-click on it, again, I can, I can you know, show all objects. I can hide the selected one. Maybe I don't want to see it, and I can continue looking at the other components. Now, the properties, remember I didn't hide the properties either. When I select on a particular component, it's showing me certain properties. So I can see the mass properties, I can see the part number and the creation date, and I can see a couple other components like, to, like its file name and its component name within the browser. Now down at the bottom provides me different zooming, zooming options, but also provides some measurement function. So the measurement function, I can say, okay, here's the first point. I'd like to snap to that center point. Notice how it's snapping. And it gives me not just the distance, but also the component distances that make that up. So I get the X, Y, Z components of that particular distance. If I select somewhere else, maybe I just want the, the length of this little slot in here, I can do that as well. And then I click done when I'm done because I've gathered that information. Maybe what we like to do is cut a section in here. So I can use the section tool. So I select on a particular component, perhaps I'd like to do the X plane, and I can use that to section those components and see inside of it. And then I can also drag and change the location of that, that se section. I can also do an explode, and this is because this is an inventor model. If I had pushed up an AutoCAD 2D drawing, it wouldn't have the explode option. I don't have the option to explode individual components, but the idea is you know, just show me all the components and let me see where they are. So I can use this explode function to quickly you know, explode the entire assembly. Okay, I can also do some markups in here. So when you're marking up a 3D model, what it does is it takes a snapshot. So you got a 2D snapshot. Now I can start marking this up. So perhaps what I'd like to do is I'd like to point an arrow at these three slots and I'd like to add some text and say, you know, are they large enough? And then I'll save that. So what that does is it adds a comment to the model. So this comment is now saved to the shared view. I can also do generic comments. You can see here, there's just these generic comments, no markups on them. I can say, you know, overall, and then I can post that. Now for me as the inventor user, I don't even have to use the Autodesk viewer. So if I go back to inventor right now and I click the refresh at the top, it's gonna to go out and it's going to ping the Autodesk viewer and come back and say, hey, I have some information to share, share for you. So I did a little bit quick, that second comment hasn't been saved yet, but I'm gonna click on this tile in the panel so I can see that, I can say, hey, I'm gonna go make those changes and then I'm gonna mark it as resolved. Or perhaps what I'd like to do is just reply to that and say, yeah, they are big enough. So you get this kind of collaborative environment where you can be posting comments and replying to comments and the person on the other end doesn't need Inventor, they don't need AutoCAD, they don't need any CAD system, and you as the designer never have to leave Inventor. You click refresh, the comments come down, you make your changes, you tag them as, as done or, or apply another comment, and you go back and forth with that information. It all relies on the share on the the Autodesk viewer to post that information. You share the link, you can work on it from there, 
And remember, you don't have to leave the application as all the information is presented to you directly from within Inventor.